Hi. One of the most, imp most pressing questions in earthquake physics is understanding where and when earthquakes occur and how seismicity is related to stress changes in the earth crust. So our paper in JGR presents a new seismicity model that addresses this issue. All seismicity models must be able to explain the key features of observed seismicity as presented in this simple graph, as for instance, the background rate, stress shadow effects, or aftershocks after step load in stress. Also, the Coulomb failure criterion is commonly accepted, uh, which assumes that earthquakes are triggered if a strength threshold is exceeded on a fault. The simple linear Coulomb model cannot explain time-dependent earthquakes after step load as commonly observed in aftershocks and reflected in the established Omori decay. So therefore, we have studied the theoretical background of seismicity models in general and introduced a little modification to the Coulomb failure model. Instead of assuming that a source is triggered instantaneously when the frictional strength is exceeded, we have introduced an average time to failure, TF, that depends exponentially on the absolute Coulomb stress. This allows to define probability, the probability for a single source to be triggered. If there are multiple sources, then the probability of an earthquake is weighted according to the distribution of all sources. This led us to think about what distributions functions look like. And we found that other seismicity models such as rate and state implicitly assume an equilibrium distribution for tetraconic stress rates calculated and plotted here in this blue uh, line and blue area. So the advantage of our model is however, that we can define also other distribution functions uh, we tested the model extensively and found that for an equilibrium distribution, we can exactly reproduce all the predictions of the rate and state model, including the Omori law as seen in this comparative figure here. However, if we assume a different distribution that as for instance, a Gaussian function associated with faults of preferential orientation, then the aftershock prediction changes significantly as seen here. This might explain, for example, why induced intraplate earthquakes often have different aftershock patterns. So we applied this new model to several induced seismicity cases, and it also comes with an open source Python software. It was honestly my first GitHub project that I could set up only with the help of my son. So we provide all the results, all our results as Python script, scripts. Here you can see a comparison of different prediction models for induced seismicity in the Groningen gas field in the Netherlands. And if you want to learn more, please read the paper and try out our software. We wish you much fun. Thanks a lot.